Delta 1821, contact departure, good day. Good departure, Delta 1821, good day. Hello, YouTube. Captain Mac here. Don't you just love when everything works like not at all? Yeah, there was supposed to be some sarcasm in there because I'm just a little annoyed. I recorded this once already, twice already, I think, uh, and for whatever stupid reason, the recorder didn't want to work properly or whatever. It recorded it and then in the middle of saving it, it crashed out and then it did it again. And it's just, it's randomly doing that to me now. I have no idea why. So, good times. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, this is going to be your GPS, basic GPS navigation tutorial. I've been uh, obviously doing a series of tutorials here and the idea here of course is to show you how to use the basic functions of the FSX default GPS. Uh, the last video we did was the basic VOR to VOR navigation. That was a pretty long video, pretty in-depth. Um, there's not a lot to this one so this video is going to be quite a bit quicker hopefully but of course every time I say I'm going to do a short video it ends up being like an hour long because I talk so much so uh, yeah no promises but <laughs> Either way, you probably recognize this chart. This is what we use for our basic VOR to VOR navigation tutorial. This is your Phoenix VOR here, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, right there. One of the things I learned is I got to move my mouse a little slower when I do this. Uh, if we come down over here, this is the Gila Bend uh, Airport, and something I didn't mention in that uh, tutorial, that little dot right there. Let me zoom it in. Bam. Uh, that little dot is the VOR on the airfield there. So uh, you see some of these other airports out here, they don't have those little dots because there's no VOR. And, and uh, you know, there's these other symbols mean different things. Uh, that's not what we're here to go over. I can go over um, navigation charts sometime if you're interested, let me know. But uh, our purpose here obviously is for learning basic GPS navigation for FSX. I think I said that like four times now, so you probably get the point, right? Uh, so there was Gila Bend VOR down there, and then of course Buckeye VOR right here, and then the flight plan that I've already put into uh, into FSX today takes us to Goodyear right here. Uh, however, what we're going to do is we're going to do a change and a direct to at some point, and we're going to go direct to Phoenix, and I'll show you how to set up uh, to fly an ILS approach or or any other approach for that matter using the GPS and the FSX there. And then that's pretty much going to wrap it up. So hopefully we'll be able to do that pretty quick. Take a quick look at this chart here. I know I was on this when we started up. Uh, one of the things you can do with your GPS is some of these waypoints in here, like Alice and Perky, will show up in your uh, in your GPS. Some of them, not all of them. For example, <coughs> excuse me. Right now our flight plan takes us from Phoenix down to Gila Bend up to Buckeye and then to Avona and then to Phoenix Goodyear Airport right here so some of these waypoints will show up in there and you can program them in and I'll show you how to do it it's it's a direct to um, once you've set up the flight plan with this GPS the only real option is to put in an approach or direct to another waypoint that's it there's really nothing else you can do with it and that's that's not realistic in case anybody's wondering uh, even a basic GPS in uh, in a little Cessna 172 you know there's a basic GPS in the Cessna's I fly and you can program waypoints uh, using various methods including um, typing in GPS coordinates uh, typing in Latin long coordinates you can add waypoints in doing that yourself of course, you can't do that on the GPS on FSX because it's very basic. But that's the idea here, basic GPS tutorial. We're going to show you how to use the G basic GPS. Uh, if I can find, I've got a couple of good aircraft with like a G1000 that's a good bit more in-depth and does allow some more features. So, <clears throat> and you guys have probably seen those in my life of a virtual airline pilot videos in that King Air 200 I fly. So maybe we'll take a look at that uh, for an advanced video. But enough about this uh, that's four minutes almost five minutes I've been bumping my gums here and you're probably getting tired of hearing it so 
Let's hop on over to the aircraft and we'll take a quick look at our GPS and our flight plan and then we'll get moving and we'll show you some of the things you can do with it. Alrighty. So, I, I've actually been in this stupid airplane for like the last five minutes trying to find something. Um, and it's annoying because we get this quite a bit when it comes to default aircraft. Um, most of you probably have already heard of the NAV GPS switch. It's it's a little switch that's supposed to basically change your autopilot between whether it's using NAV radios to navigate or GPS to navigate. So in order to navigate via the GPS, we need to flip it, you guessed it, to GPS mode. Now here's the thing. First of all, let's clarify one point. It's a real switch. It's not something that's made up for FSX. Some of you might think, oh, there's, you know, nav GPS. That doesn't work. You know, that's not real. Sure it is. Uh, the little Cessna 172 I fly has a nav GPS switch. Okay, so you switch back and forth between two. Uh, so I'm looking for it here in this beach barren. Let's hop outside because I like the outside views because this thing's terrible on the outside. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so I'm looking for the switch in our beach baron here, and I can't find it. I can't find it. Now I know where it should be. It should be down here among these switches. I mean, this is where all the switches are. There's nothing on the overhead of this thing, right? There's no overhead switches or anything. So I'm looking and I'm looking. I can't find this stupid thing. So I finally get tired of it. I hit F. F10 takes you to the main panel, or you can right click. You can go to cockpit, and then rather than virtual cockpit, regular cockpit. And this, this works, as far as I know, in all FSX default aircraft. Or you could hit F10 and it'll take you right here. So look, here's your nav GPS switch. Nav GPS, right next to the fuel pumps, right ne which are right next to the icing, right? Okay, let's go back over to the virtual cockpit. Give it a second to load. Here's all your icing. Uh, where's everything else? There's my fuel pumps. Where's my nav GPS switch? Why is it not on here? Right? That's annoying, isn't it? This is this is why I don't like default aircraft. Now, that being said, let me also say that, that there are a lot of aircraft that folks make that they put out for free, and, and I'm not bad-mouthing them because that stuff's not easy. I've tried it. It is no joke. So I'm not bad-mouthing them. But there's a lot of freeware aircraft, same problems. Switches aren't where they're supposed to be, or, you, you know, like you look here, the graphics look like, you know, I'm looking at my screen. I'm getting 30 frames a second right now while recording. But, you know, th the switches don't look real clear and crisp, things like that. It, it, you know, that's just a graphics issue. But the switch isn't there. These, switch are, these switches aren't even where they're at when they're on that other view. It's just, it's annoying. And I don't like that I have to go to this view in order to find the nav GPS switch. Because we're going to have to come back to this view in a, in a while to switch back to it. So just keep that in mind though, you may have to go to this view. Another thing you can do is you can go into your uh, your control settings for FSX and you can map a button to your nav GPS. So you you know, if you've got a toggle switch, map a toggle switch. You flip it one way and it's nav, you flip it the other and it's GPS and you know there's that's a good way to go too, that make it a lot easier for you. Anyway, enough about that. We need to put this thing on GPS. So we're gonna click that down to GPS. And now we're ready to navigate via our GPS. So let's hop back over into a proper view here. All right, so where's the GPS at? That's another interesting little thing, right? Kind of an annoyance. All right, in the real world, um, this aircraft may or may not have a GPS. Most likely, this Beach Baron 58 is an older aircraft, and if it has a GPS, it's probably mounted on a little you know dash mount over here or somebody's done an aftermarket job and put it in here in which case um, you know and if you do that of course not that you guys care but if you do that you have to get it recertified by the FAA and all that the point is you could put a GPS in here right okay well there's no GPS in here but we do have a GPS because it's a default FSX aircraft so if you hit shift 3 shift and hold it down and hit 3 there's your GPS right there Alternatively, in case you're wondering, turn that off real quick. If you're of the uh, two-dimensional panel type, go back to this 2D panel, and if you click on the little, I guess you call it a satellite there, that'll pop up the GPS as well. So a couple different options for popping up the GPS there. Point is, obviously, we're here to do the the 
the basic GPS uh, navigation, so let's hop right into that because you're probably already getting bored of me. Oh, my gums running my mouth, whatever you want to call it. We've already put in our flight plan. I told you what it was. Phoenix to Gila Bend to BXK to Avona to KGYR. Avona is that waypoint that I showed you on Sky Vector. All right, and if I'm not mistaken, Avona is actually part of one of the um, ILS approaches, but I'm not looking at a chart right now, so I'm not positive. So here's our flight plan. It's already put in there. If I click flight plan again, that's what FPL is, flight plan. Then I've got it in a map view here. I can zoom out and I can zoom in. Okay, right now I'm zooming in. Now, I can click on this to zoom out, and I can click on this to zoom in, or I can roll the mouse wheel over either one of them and zoom in and out. Okay, kind of handy, right? So, zoom it out a little bit, you can see, here we are at Phoenix, down to Gila Bend. Now, I have no moving, you know, I can't move the map around in this thing. That's one of the things that's kind of obnoxious about it. Um, not that you can really do, some GPS you can do that with, but not, not all of them. So, I can't move it around so you know I can see my Avona waypoint here I can't see my BXK waypoint so I could scroll it out further I mean you gotta scroll it basically out to 150 miles above the ground in order to see the entire route right so it could be difficult to see the whole route on this thing something to keep in mind also if I had left that nav GPS switch in nav mode when I take off and I hit the nav function on the autopilot it's it's not gonna follow the GPS line simply won't do it and that that is realistic you have to put your autopilot in GPS mode to follow GPS and you need to put it in nav mode to fly in nav now can I fly a VOR in GPS mode yes if I put the VOR into the GPS now if I tune the VOR in my radio will it track it I don't know to be honest we've never tried doing that why don't we give it a try while we're at it huh might as well. We're going to go to GBN first. It's 116.6, 116.60. So let's tune that in. There's 116.60 right there. Bam, that's our. That's in our primary for our nav one. You guys remember that from our VOR. So when we take off here, uh, let's find out if we can track into the Gila Bend VOR with the nav while flying GPS. And that'll answer that question right there, won't it? Okay. So we'll go up to 6,000 feet. There's not a whole lot to show you right now. I went way beyond 6,000, didn't I? Not a whole lot to show you right now. I'm going to show you what we do when we take off. There's not a whole lot to it. Let's make sure we get our... I'm going to turn this GPS off for a second. That's another thing I don't like. You know, when you have the... Uh, there's the flaps. When you have the GPS, you know, mounted right here or something like that, it can be a little difficult to see it in this three-dimensional view, but at least I can take a quick glance at it without having to pop it up. If you have two screens, you can right click and undock this window. Now, I'm not going to do it. I actually did it a few minutes ago, so you might have noticed a little edit in there, unless I was really good about it and maybe you didn't notice the edit, which makes me pretty awesome. But uh, <laughs> if I undock the window with the recording software that I'm using, it will bounce back and forth trying to record both windows and it'll create like 50 videos that are half a second each. And if I actually put those together, you'll have a seizure. The point is, you can undock the window and put it on and then you just drag it over to a second screen and then you don't have to worry about popping it up or shutting it down or anything like that and that's fantastic uh, <clears throat> we're not going to be doing that because I need to show you what's going on if I drag this to my other window you won't be able to see it anymore and of course like I just said if I undock it yeah you don't want to see that <laughs> so we're not going to bother with that we're not worried about it um, we'll just pop our GPS up when we need it and when we don't need it we'll shrink it down It's as simple as that right so for the moment we don't need it our airplane is pretty much ready to rock and roll One of the things you can do here is you can take a look at your GPS and you can see that it says the desired track or course is 219 degrees magnetic right 219 degrees magnetic so when we take off we can turn to 219 degrees so we just rotate that to where we think about 219 degrees is, and then just give, an give us an idea of where we're turning to now if you look at that based on the way we're facing right now it looks like basically we have to make a u-turn when we take off right is that what we see on here doesn't really look like it does it let's try and zoom this in a little bit okay it looks to me like when we take off 
we're gonna um, because we're gonna be taking off in this direction here to our right it looks like we'll be making a left uh, just a slight left turn sometimes what will happen on this GPS and to be honest with you my brain doesn't want to function properly so I couldn't tell you if it happened right now or not but when you push back or something it actually reverses the direction of everything I don't know why it does that it just does because it decided you're moving backwards and so it needs to reverse the direction so just keep that in mind um, as we pull forward we'll take a quick look and see what that says but it tells us we need to turn to 219 degrees so that's what we're going to turn to other than that there's nothing else to do at the moment once we take off uh, and you know we turn towards our course we'll turn on our autopilot and let it do the work for us and we'll hit our nav and altitude button and we'll go from there alright I've done enough talking on this thing we're like 15 minutes in this thinking video already so let's get rocking and rolling and uh, let me show you how this is done so you see I'm moving forward now and you can see see the GPS flip directions now right so now we'll be making a right turn interesting how that works isn't it alright you know what autopilot take over just for the moment remember I want to hit the nav button this time not the heading button okay I could hit the heading button and let it turn me towards that okay but if I hit the nav button it's gonna go where I want it to go I have no idea what was up with the yoke there just now that was that was obnoxious I I need a new yoke if you guys care about me at all somebody buy me a new yoke <laughs> I don't have any money somebody buy me a new yoke this thing's killing me it's driving me nuts you guys, for those of you who've watched some of my videos, my uh, my life of virtual airline pilot videos, you know I've been on short final or like a few feet above the runway, and the yoke just yanks itself to the left or right. Oh, oh, it's just seriously, seriously, this thing's a piece of crap. Uh, it's really not actually. I've had it for like seven or eight years, so it's done well up to this point. But enough is enough. I think it's pretty much burnt out, right? Okay. You can see we're making our turn here, and what's going to happen because because we s flipped our switch to the GPS mode. Okay, I'm just pull this uh, RPMs back a little bit. Because we flipped our switch to the GPS mode, the aircraft is going to turn all the way until it tracks on course. Now, for those of you who are used to flying more advanced aircraft, you'll know this as LNAV mode. Okay, lateral navigation. It's really the same thing. That's all you're doing when you fly LNAV in a large aircraft. You're flying a GPS. That's all it's doing. It uses the IRS, the inertial reference system, combined with the GPS receiver to track on course. That's what LNAV is. So our our GPS in this little thing is basically LNAV. That's what it is. We don't have VNAV in this aircraft, but we're basically flying LNAV right now. And you'll see it'll turn and it'll follow on this course. And that's great. That's what we wanted to do. So if we look here, it's going to fly all the way out to Gila Bend, and then it's going to fly up to BXK. And then it's going to fly over to Avona. You can see we put Avona in there, and then it's going to fly down to Goodyear. It's as simple as that. There's not much to it, right? Okay, so you're probably wondering, okay, what's next? Well, I'll tell you what's next. I'm going to pause the video here so that you don't have to watch 45 minutes of me doing a whole lot of nothing. And then when we get close to Gila Bend, I'm going to show you what you do when you transition from one way point to the next while flying GPS. Aren't you excited? Of course you are. How could you not be? This is like the thrill of a lifetime here. Okay, seriously though, be back in a few minutes. All right, we're just about five miles from Gila Bend or GBN. It's listed as G GBN on the GPS because that's the VOR we're flying to. That's what we put in as our waypoint was the VOR. I did want to come on here just a minute or two early, and I wanted to make make note of something. Remember before we took off, we said, "Hey, you know, can we fly?" the VOR using the nav while we're tuned in on the GPS. We know we're flying it on the GPS, we're tracking in on the nav radio, even though it's tuned to the right frequency for the Gila Bend VOR 116.60. It's not tracking it. It doesn't matter what I do with this thing. It just shows it centered with a two indication. So we're definitely not tracking the VOR on our nav radio. Okay, so just want to make sure we're clear on that. If we're flying GPS, we can fly VOR to VOR. We just can't do it using our nav radio. Okay, so we're about to make the transition here, so I want you to brace yourselves. Those of you who have seen this before are probably laughing right now. This is how we fly a transition from one waypoint to the next when we're flying GPS to GPS. And I know at first it's going to look like a really complicated procedure, and it's going to feel a little overwhelming maybe. Um, but I just want you to bear with me and understand that you can do this, alright? Just 
take it one step at a time and uh, so step one is to get the airplane in the air step two is to hit the nav button and make sure you're flipped on GPS and step three is to just let the airplane fly because we're flying the GPS we aren't doing anything it's going to transition from one waypoint to the next on its own I know that was kind of a big build up for a silly little thing and some of you are going oh you're so obnoxious I know I know I know you'll pull through though you'll be alright you guys will come around uh... that being said so all we do now you know it's it's gonna overfly the waypoint a little bit so it's gonna have to come back to the right a little and line back up again it's no different than flying L nav except that L nav in a complex aircraft like 737 is far more accurate it'll start turns a little bit early so that it so that it turns across the waypoint rather than crossing over it then turning like we just did and so on no big deal alright so what else is there to do well there's a couple other things I want to show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the aircraft fly out here for another couple minutes and then we're going to hop back well for a few minutes then we're going to hop back on here and I'm going to show you a couple more things and then we're going to wrap this up and call it a day alright so stand by alright we're going to wrap this up here shortly um, I wanted to show you a couple other things not just with the GPS uh, you remember we tuned in the Helaben VOR but we're flying GPS so it's not tracking it but something I, I didn't even think about it until just now it, it is tracking it as far as distance our distance measuring equipment is working so if you look here you can see that we're actually getting further away from the Helaben VOR which would make sense if we look at our GPS here See, we're flying from GBN to BXK, so it makes sense that we're getting further away from our VOR and our distance measuring equipment, which is based off of the signal from the nav radio, is tracking that. So we can see that we're getting further away, and when we get into more advanced navigation techniques, uh, we'll see why that's a big deal. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to change where we're going. Now, the, one of the things, that, the issues that I have with this default GPS, if I click on the flight plan, um, I, I push this button, I just click it on top here, and that brings the cursor up. And then I can scroll down using the inner wheel here. I'm sorry, using the outer wheel. I always get those confused. And it lets me scroll up and down through my waypoints. Now, if I, if I, if I'm on our see there we go we're talking about two things thinking about three if I'm sitting on the waypoint if my cursor or my highlight is on the waypoint and I hit menu it'll let me activate that leg immediately what does that mean well if I do that right now it should turn from where we're at assuming it's VX uh, assuming it's BXK and fly towards Avona or Avana however you say it so we hit enter to activate and you see the aircraft's turning. Why? Well, because it is no longer oh, going the wrong way. It is no longer viewing this as the active leg. It's viewing this as the active leg. So it's going to take the shortest route to this line here. So it's going to kind of cut it in half, and then it'll turn on that and then fly towards Havana. So that's one way that we can uh, change our course. Let's say we don't want to fly all the way out to BXK. We just wanted to get past something right here. We could put that waypoint instead of adding another waypoint here. We could just BXK, and then once we're we've reached the point we want to get to, we can go ahead and uh, we go into our flight plan, turn on our cursor, scroll down until we get to Havana. We would hit uh, menu, not enter. Hit menu, and it'll ask us if we want to activate that leg. We hit we hit enter and it activates that leg which it's already done. An alternative method we could do, we can fly heading mode while we're in GPS mode. So I can rotate my heading, let's say ATC tells me I need to fly uh, 330 degrees. Okay, So I rotate my heading to 330 and I click the heading button and it'll turn to 330. It will fly heading mode while we're in GPS. So now we turn to heading 330 and we fly that until ATC either gives us another heading or tells us proceed on course or resume own navigation. That's You hear that a lot with the FSX uh, ATC. It says resume own navigation. Now, I, I get that all the time. I, I get resume own navigation. Um, 
I also get, uh, what have I heard? I'm talking real world ATC now. Navigation uh, at your discretion is one thing I've heard some controllers say, but typically the proper terminology would be resume on navigation. So if right now ATC told us to resume on navigation, that means we can navigate where, wherever we want to navigate to, right? They're, they're not telling us we have to hold this heading any longer. So if they say resume on navigation, I can hit nav again and now it's going to turn back to try and intercept this leg right here okay what else can we do we can't really do anything else with the flight plan okay if I highlight the cursor and I go to any one of these waypoints and hit menu the only option I get is to fly that leg right now okay if I don't want to do that I hit menu again it turns it off my other option is a direct to so let's say I've decided I want to go to Phoenix instead I'm flying VFR here um, and I decide I want to fly to Phoenix okay so I hit the direct to and it pulls up this page here and you can see the cursor is already highlighted now we started at Phoenix and we want to end at Phoenix not at Goodyear if I rotate this knob here it does nothing okay except well it does something it'll move it between these different areas on the on the uh, GPS here what I want to do is I want to select PXR that's the uh, VOR that's next to Phoenix, right? So I, I go to the outer wheel here and I start scrolling and you can see I'm getting letters or numbers depending on which direction I scroll. So if I scroll down, it's going up through the numbers and eventually it'll get to the letters. If I scroll up, it does the opposite direction. Pretty simple, right? So we know the first letter is P, so P, if we can find it, P, and then we go to that outer wheel and scroll up once. Good one down once I lied down once with our scroll wheel and then go back to the outer wheel and we go to R right that goes forward let's go PX and then down once and then R right and now see what it's doing here it's actually only giving us the options available PXV PXT PXR is Phoenix PXN but it's not actually giving us the entire alphabet we want to go to Phoenix PXR. So now we're good, we hit enter. It's going to ask us what do we want to go to. We're going to go to the VOR, so we're going to leave it on that one. We could choose another one if there were other options available. We're going to hit enter again. And then it asks us do we want to activate. Yes, we want to activate. Okay, it goes back to the flight plan page, but if we click flight plan again, it shows us our new route is now to Phoenix. Excellent. Now this brings me to the last thing I want to show you. We're going to fly into Phoenix. And uh, I'm not worried about the weather right now because we're just showing you some things. So let's just assume you can see we're flying, uh, we're, we're going to fly 068 degrees. So let's say we're going to land on runway uh, 07 right. Okay. If we click the procedure button, select approach, hit enter, there's no approach. Why? Because we're flying to PXR right now. See? I did that on purpose. I know you're thinking, oh, you messed it up. No, I did that on purpose. There's no approach to PXR. It doesn't do us any good. So how do we deal with that? There's a couple ways we can deal with this. First, we can go to nearest, and we can scroll through here. Here's, here's our different airports. Hit the cursor, and I'm going through this a little quick because we're going to get there fast. So I scroll down on the outer wheel here, scroll down until I find Phoenix. There's KGEU, and it's not even showing Phoenix yet. It's not showing it as one of the nearest. Okay, that's okay. These are the nearest airports at the moment. If it's not on there, the other option is what? Direct to, because I know what it is, right? So instead of direct to KGEU, okay, and now you're wondering how do I get that? Go nearest, highlight with your cursor, and whichever one's highlighted, if I hit direct to, let's, let's go ahead and go direct to Buckeye right now. So I hit direct to, it, hi it puts that in the direct to field for me, and I hit enter, enter again to activate, and look, we're turning out towards Buckeye now. Buckeye's behind us. See what happened there? Let's do that one more time. Nearest. Let's say we want to go to Goodyear. Okay? And this is great in an emergency situation. If I need to find the nearest airport that I can get to right now, guess what? That's where I'm going. Okay? What is it? <coughs> Excuse me. That snuck up on me. Okay, this tells me the longest runway at that airport. All right? So if I have a larger aircraft and I need more runway, or if I'm heavy and I need more runway, let's say I need at least 8,000 feet of runway, K 
KGYR or Goodyear at 9.1 miles is the closest airport with a runway that can handle my aircraft. I scroll to KGYR and then hit the direct to button. It highlights it for me. Hit enter. It highlights activate. Hit enter again and now we're going to turn to KGYR and I can get in there and land my aircraft. Okay. Now again right now Phoenix is not showing up as one of the nearest airports. Why? Well, for whatever reason, they just didn't put it on the list there. Okay? Uh, and you should be able to go to the next page, next page, but uh, let's try. I've never actually tried to go to the next page. It doesn't let me go to the next page. It, okay, you see there's one, two, three, four, five pages here. It's five pages of the nearest airports, but it's not letting me go to any other pages. I don't have any options here. That let me go to the next page. Okay, I could hit menu on here. There's no options. Menu again clears it out. There's nothing there for me. Okay. Alternatively, let me close this out for a second. Okay. Uh, what I could do, where is it at? Oh, I could pull up my. That was the wrong button. I could pull up my ATC menu, and I could click on nearest airport list. All right. And this is going to give me more options. Okay, there's Goodyear, there's Luke Air Force Base, Glendale. Airports farther from you. Click on that, and it pulls up the next series of airports. Notice it still hasn't pulled up Phoenix. Okay, click on it again. Where are we at? Still no Phoenix. Okay, there's Phoenix Sky Harbor. We're on what page four or something like that. Okay. Phoenix Sky Harbor is on there, so that's an, that's another option if you're flying with ATC, because what I'm what's what's going to happen here? Let's go back and uh, nearest airport list again. Okay, uh, farther from you, We've gotta find Phoenix real quick. Farther from you, Phoenix Sky Harbor. Click on it, and then you can tune to the tower or the ATIS. That's if you're using the ATC. We're not using ATC. Let's go back to our GPS real quick. So that really leaves us one option at this point, and that's a direct two, not PXR. That that just happens to be highlighted already, but we want to go direct to Phoenix. Okay, so that's KPXH, KPHX. <laughs> Sorry. So we're we've already got our P there, right? Let's see if it'll do it just PHX. You know, in the GPS I use in, uh, yeah, it's not going to let me. In the GPS I use in a real aircraft, and in, in a um, in a Cessna 172, I can put PHX or KPHX. In this case, we're going to have to go KPHX. There it is. KPHX Phoenix Sky Harbor. Hit enter. Enter again. Activate. And now, guess what? We're going straight to Phoenix. There we go. Now we're pretty close here, right? So, last thing we're going to show you procedure. I want to fly runway we said 7 right. Select you hit procedure, select approach, enter. Here's all our approaches available to us. All right, not just the ones in the direction we're heading. I can use the outer mouse wheel to scroll down and that shows me all the approaches. Scroll down and up. We're going to fly the ILS 7 right approach, so scroll down until that's highlighted and hit enter. We can fly it via this waypoint or we can just do vectors which is going to take us straight in let's go ahead and do vectors for the moment so we'll hit enter on vectors and then we can load it or activate it if I load it it shows that I'm currently en route to Phoenix and this is the approach that I've loaded now let's say I'm ready to fly that approach I go to procedure now I've got more options I can activate vectors to the final approach or I can activate the actual approach if I activate approach there's there it is now there's something you need to understand about this because this will this will get you. Okay, if I'm way over here, on, let's say I'm over here on my GPS and I activate this approach, it's not going to fly to here. It's going to fly to the first waypoint on the approach, which is here, Toady. Okay, that's where it's trying to go right now because of, because of where I'm at, it's going to line up from back here. But if I'm over here somewhere, it's going to fly to Toady, which, if you notice, you can just see it's right at the edge of the ILS so I don't want to intercept it there I want to intercept it out here okay 
so what can we do about that? Well, let's take a look at some other options here. Let's go back to Select Approach. ILS 7 Rights Highlighter. We're going to go with that one. Let's see what happens if we select to fly it via Alice. Okay. Let's load it for the moment. Okay. And let's look. Now, where is Alice at? That's behind us, isn't it? See, that's Toadie up there, but Alice is back here. So what happens if I hit Activate Approach? It's going to turn around because my first waypoint is behind me, which is far enough behind me that I have to zoom way out to be able to see it. That's where Alice is. Okay, so if I was too close in, I could do that. It's going to turn around, it's going to fly to Alice, and then it's going to it's going to turn around again, and it's going to fly back to these waypoints here. Okay, well, what if I don't want to fly all of that? Well, there's a couple other options. I could use the direct to function. Say I want to go direct to Kagor. All right, highlight it hit direct to it's not giving me that is it it's C-A-G-O-R right so let's go to C R Kagor right it's an intersection select it hit enter and activate and it's going to take us directly to C-A-G-O-R now <clears throat> but it's not going to take us on the ILS approach it's just going to take us to that waypoint we go back to select approach there's nothing there anymore, is there? Okay. Do we have Phoenix in our nearest again? And I'm just showing you guys these functions now. Still not there, so if we want to go to Phoenix, direct to. Keep it keep this in mind. It it takes a minute to get through this, right? And and you know your your typical GPS that you use uh, in a small aircraft, that's what you do. You scroll these wheels. That, that's how you really do it, okay? So we're going to go direct to Phoenix again, enter, activate, it's going to take us there. Now you can see we're going direct to Phoenix, we were pointed almost in that direction already. Alright, last thing I'm going to show you here and then we're done. Procedure, select approach, we're still going to fly the ILS-7 right, we're going to fly it via Alice, enter, and we're going to load. Now remember, Alice is way behind us. Let's say we don't want to do that right now. That's why we loaded it because we didn't want to go back to Alice. But we do want to fly some of these. We want to fly along these other waypoints. I can go to Procedure and instead of activating Approach, I can activate Vectors to Final. And by doing that, it's going to take me to Final Approach, which is what? Toady, right? And it's going to fly me into Toady. Now, this will not fly the ILS for you. This is simply GPS navigation from waypoint to waypoint. So it's going to take me to Toady. It's not going to put me at the proper altitude, and it will not fly a glide slope for me. I'm going to do a tutorial on how to fly an ILS here pretty soon, and when I do that, um, you know, we'll talk about flying an ILS uh, approach starting with the GPS, and we'll talk about doing it just with uh, regular, uh, you know, several different, there's different ways to fly an ILS. In the end, an ILS is still an ILS. It's all about how we get there first and then what method we choose to fly it. We're not going to fly the ILS today. This is going to wrap up our tutorial at this point. So that being said, you can see Phoenix out in front of us. We're at 6,000 feet, so we'd be way too high anyway. We'd need to lose some altitude if we wanted to fly this approach. If I just let this aircraft keep flying, it's going to fly to Toady. And then the next waypoint, as far as the aircraft is concerned on the GPS, is, is the landing waypoint. So what it'll do is it'll actually fly out over the runway and it'll just start circling and it'll keep circling until I do something with the aircraft. That's your basic GPS navigation. I'm sure this video, I haven't looked at the time yet, but I'm sure it's a little longer than anticipated, but you can see there are quite a few things you can do with the GPS. Um, it's not as in-depth as a real-world GPS, but it's not too bad either and it's a good way to get around, especially in small GA aircraft. When we start getting into larger aircraft, and I will show you, especially when we do some advanced stuff, I will show you how to use um, the GPS as well as VOR to VOR navigation in something like a default, uh, FSX default 737, because those are the kind of airplanes we like to fly. The reason I'm using default aircraft, in case anybody's wondering, is because I understand that not all of you have the money or the desire to go out and buy you know, a PMDG 737NGX. Great aircraft, it's awesome, and I'll do some stuff, uh, show some tutorials and stuff on that later down the road, but uh, 
the idea of these basic tutorials is for those of you who either don't have the money, don't have the time, or the desire to get an expensive payware aircraft, you can still uh, follow a lot of real world procedures. And G using the GPS is real world. It's not, you know, some people think it's not real world. It is, believe me. And even though this Beechcraft Baron 58 is an older aircraft, uh, if somebody bought one today, uh, you know, say it was built in the 70s, guess what? They're probably going to put a GPS in it, even if it's just a little dash mount. All right, enough of that. I'm done talking for this one. As always, uh, I've enjoyed making this video. I hope that it's helpful for you. Uh, if there's something you don't understand, any questions you have, please leave it down in the comments. If there's tutorial videos you'd like to see, uh, something more in-depth, something less in-depth, please uh, let me know down in the comments. And of course, if you like the videos, please give me a thumbs up and tell me down in the comments on that as well. As always, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate all my subscribers, and I want to give a shout out to all uh, all of the latest subscribers. I'm not throwing anybody's name up here because I don't know if they want me sharing their names on my videos. But I do have some recent subscribers, and a few of you have even uh, come into the ranks of Phoenix Virtual Airways. Uh, and some of you have said it's a result of the videos I've been putting on here. And i got to tell you, that just thrills me to no end. I think that's fantastic. That's why I started the Life of a Virtual Airline Pilot series. So I thank you for your subscriptions, and I thank you for your support. And I look forward to continuing more of these videos. So until next time, I'm Captain Mac. And as always, keep the blue side up unless otherwise instructed by ATC or performing aerobatics. You folks have a fantastic day.